Probably one of the most effective ways to fish riprap has always been cranking. I mean, cranking riprap and catching bass goes way back. On and on and on, you hear guys catching fish, cranking riprap. But one of the things that I've noticed over the past few years, a jerk bait is that bait that I can pick up a lot of times when conditions change. I mean, if you've had a lot of wind and, the, and the, the waves have been crashing in on the riprap, the water's churned up, it seems like a crankbait is the way to go. But once those conditions change and the water smooths out and things start to get a little bit calmer, I've found that I can catch a lot of the same fish on a jerk bait. I mean, it just seems like a jerk bait, you don't have to have quite as much wind, you don't have to have quite as awkward of conditions or, or rough conditions to catch them on a jerk bait. And whether it's the McStick 110, the 95, the 115, depending on the depth level I'm trying to fish, a jerk bait's just an exceptional way to catch fish on riprap when the conditions are like what you're seeing right here. I mean, when you got that light ripple on the water, you don't have big wind, a McStick 110's a bait I love to throw on riprap. Probably the thing about it is, I feel like a lot of times when these fish get up off the bottom, when the conditions slick off, a lot of times they kind of get bad about suspending. And to me, a jerk bait is the ultimate bait to catch fish that are suspended out off of the bank. And a McStick is just a great way for me to put fish in a boat that I miss with a crankbait a lot of times. Probably one of the biggest questions I get asked about fishing a jerk bait on riprap, or, or maybe not just riprap, but in a lot of different scenarios, is the cadence. And really, that's going to be based on the water temperature, the conditions, how aggressive the fish have told me they are, before I really figure out what cadence is going to be the one. But once you figure it out, you've got to be paying attention so you continue on with it. Typically, when I first start throwing a jerk bait, when that water temperature is down in the upper 40s, the, the lower 50s, my cadence is going to be super slow. I mean, I'm talking, you know, throwing that bait out there, winding it down, and making myself count to 10, you know, 5 or 10 before I ever move the bait. Once I've counted to 5 or 10, then I'll just pop the bait a couple times, maybe give it a pull, and basically go through the whole step again. As the water temperature warms and fish get a little bit more aggressive, I mean, you can definitely speed the cadence up and you're going to be able to cover a lot more water. I mean, that's one thing about it. I mean, a lot of people take fishing a jerk bait slow in the wrong manner. I mean, I'm still covering water. I'm just giving the fish a time to react to that bait when I'm letting it pause. So, you know, don't get hung up in the deal where you're only fishing small sections of water at a time. And that's where, you know, pulling the bait really comes into play. That's when you pull the bait to cover water and to fish more water during the course of that. Another thing a lot of people ask me is, well, what makes you decide which jerk bait you're gonna throw? I mean, it's all about depth. I mean, if I'm fishing pretty traditional riprap that falls off pretty quick and, and you've got eight or 10 foot of water really close to the bank, the 110 is probably gonna be my choice. If I notice that the forage in a particular body of water I'm fishing is small, or I'm seeing a lot of those little shore minnows hop around, the 95 is gonna be the bait that I turn to. But then when I get in that situation where maybe you've got some vegetation mixed in, or the water's just a lot shallower, the 115's the bait to go to. The 115 is the only bait in the line that's not a suspender. It's that bait that when you're trying to cover water, when you need to fish shallower, it's the one you wanna go with. It's a floater, you can cover a lot of water, and it's not gonna dive more than about three foot deep. 